Hi, it's Mrs. Roberts, Corner Lake Media Specialist. Um, this is part of our Sunshine State Reader uh, First Chapter Friday series, and this week's book is called Lifeboat 12 by Susan Hood. And what's interesting about this book is it's written in prose. So it's written like a piece of poetry. So um, it's kind of neat because some of the words are different in the book. Like it'll fit with what it says. So if it says the word sink, the, word, the letters might look like they're sinking. So it's a very interesting book visually. So we're going to start at the beginning. Summer 1940, The Envelope. I know I shouldn't do it. I know I shouldn't. I'll be in trouble if I open the large envelope addressed to my parents. But it's stamped on his majesty's service. It's not every day a family like mine gets a letter from the king. The clock tick, tick, ticks. I glance down the hall to make sure I'm alone. I slide my finger under the flap and peer inside. Dear sir or madam, I am directed by the Children's Overseas Reception Scheme. It's nothing, a doll form letter. But wait, someone has written in my name. Your preliminary application has been considered by the board, and they have decided that Kenneth J. Sparks is suitable for being sent to Canada. What are you doing? cries my stepmom, seizing the letter from my hands. That is not addressed to you. Charles, Charles, this cheeky son of yours wants a good clout about the ears. That letter is about me, I say. You're sending me away? I glare up at my father who appears in the doorway. My stepmom got her wish to get rid of me. Ken, let me explain, says my dad. This letter could save your life. The reasons why. They sit me down. I shrug their hands off my shoulders and stare at the floor. Heart slamming, heart rising. They talk and talk. Voices swirling in the air, rising and falling, overlapping, interrupting. Weaving a net, a trap, but I'm not going to fall for it. I try to block them out. I concentrate on slowing the storm in my head. They're sending me away. But hang on. What's that about the Germans? The Germans are coming, says Dad. France surrendered this summer, and the Nazis are gunning for England next. Hundreds of thousands of parents applied to have their kids sent out of harm's way. You're lucky to have been selected, says Mom. I have a sister in Edmonton, Canada. You can live with her. With your father out of work, money is tight. We can rent out your room to help pay for rations. Just think, sailing on a ship, says Dad. It'll be an adventure. You'll make your way in the world. Get your head out of those books. My books? My stories of buccaneers and buried gold? Cowboys, braves, and day of old? I snort. Most parents would be chuffed to have a kid who loves to read. I read them because they take me away far away from where I'm living. My three-year-old sister toddles over and rests her head on my knees. I run my hand over her curls. What about Margaret? Shouldn't she go too? She's too young, says mom. Only ages five through 15 are allowed. At 13, I'll be one of the oldest. No adults, I ask? Parents can't go, says my dad. But you'll have escorts, a whole staff of doctors, nurses, teachers, priests who are volunteering. Yes, son, you're one of the lucky ones. You'll leave in September. You mustn't tell your friends, says Dad. Loose lips sink ships, you know. And there'll be a new overcoat for you, says Mom, as if that clinches the deal. I squint up at her and think, I'm as good as gone. I tear out of the house. Escape. I dash down the streets, down the railway line, across the tracks over a fence. There in the wall behind a loose brick, I snatch my stash of penny cannon fireworks. I stick them in a tree, strike a match to the fuse, and back away. I watch as the wick sputters, smokes, sparks. Blam! It makes quite a hole. The charcoal-scented smoke wafts away, and my fury with it. The smoke distracts me, as it does angry bees. Let's face it, my stepmom never liked me. She calls me a terror, a little so-and-so. I wish my own mom were alive. The doctors told her she wasn't supposed to have children, but she didn't listen, and she died soon after I was born. It's all my fault. But why did my dad have to marry my nanny? Well, I wouldn't have Margaret otherwise. Sure, she's a bother sometimes, but she makes me laugh. I think about my stepmom, the ship, and this evacuation planned. I feel like a hand-me-down my stepmom doesn't want. 
so she'll donate me to a good cause. Forget it, I'm not going. She won't get rid of me that easily. I climb over another fence, hoist myself up a tree, and grab an apple to eat. She thinks I'm a tear just because I like to scrump a few apples? My dad just says I'm full of beans. I can't get away with much, or I get a clout around the ear hole or the cane at school. And now they want to send me away across the ocean. Well, I'm not going. All right. That's like the first 12, 13 pages of this book. Check it out from the Media Center. Have a great week.